conversation and okay. you know, so making yeah, some kind of a thing. Okay. <laughs> hey, welcome back to In the Can. Uh, again, heavy day today. We've got some great films we're talking about today. This is one that uh, is intriguing because the story is just so wild that uh, it is definitely a must-see here at Sundance. It's called The Lovers and the Despot. We've got filmmakers uh, Rob Kanan and Ross Adams with us. Welcome, guys. Thank you very much. And uh, I really don't know how to set this one up because I started watching this and... Uh, and I didn't really have a lot of background on it, it being early in the festival. But as this story unfolded, it became so, and I mean this in the literal term, fantastic, where I couldn't believe what I was watching hmm. in a way. So why don't you very quickly just kind of set up uh, the scenario, and uh, then we'll talk about how, what it took to make this film. Okay. Um, well, it's about a South Korean actress and director who were the kind of biggest, most famous celebrity couple of their time. And this was back in and about the 70s? Uh, uh, yeah, well, in, in the, the, so the heyday was in the 60s, 60s. in South Korea. Yeah. Um, but their romance fell apart, their careers fell apart, and then individually they were lured to Hong Kong and kidnapped by Kim Jong-il, dictator of North Korea, who basically wanted them to be his very own filmmakers. So, and, and they were kidnapped separately? Yes. Yeah. And, so, and so obviously there was still a connection because Choi was kidnapped, and uh, Shin went looking for her. Yeah, that's right. So he went to Hong Kong to try to retrace her steps and find out what happened, and he gets kidnapped. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a love story as well. It's a strange <laughs> kind of love story. Um, I, we don't want to give too much away. Right. Um, that's a central part of it, but if it hadn't been for Kim Jong-il, uh, they probably wouldn't have been reunited and fallen back in love. Right. So he kind of played Cupid in a very twisted way. And, and just to try to get into the mindset of Kim Jong Il, basically, and, and and there is one part of the film where you you hear his voice talking about how North Korean film is horrible. Yeah, and uh, the South Koreans are doing it right. We're doing it horrible. Well, he's like a so lot he of kidnaps producers. filmmakers. He he sees how things are. And he wants things to be better. Yeah, you know. Oh, and, <laughs> and <laughs> well, he solved a problem, you know, I guess, right? <laughs> but his way of going about it is a bit unusual, perhaps. Yeah. But then he's an unusual man. So what what drew you to this story? How did you find out about it? Well, well, I can't we, remember exactly when we heard it, but. Um, We'd both, both come across this story, and we'd actually kind of sat on the story because we thought this story is so amazing that mm -hmm. someone must have already done something with the sure. story. And we, we met up one day to kind of bounce ideas, and we'd both been thinking about this story. And then we kind of thought, well, where is that film? You know, uh, we started doing some research. No one had really done anything. So that's the point where we thought, you know, we have to make this movie. So it became a long and arduous process, obviously, because it's a documentary. Sure. <laughs> that needs financing. It's quite a, an epic kind of scale. Uh, film which requires a lot of multi-locations and there's recons in there mm -hmm. so it was it was difficult but certain things really helped us along the way these tapes you refer to mm -hmm. the Kim Jong-il tapes became uh, this amazing resource for us yeah kind of want to tease people a little about that but it's it becomes a key to knowing who Kim Jong-il and, I, and I don't know if yeah. most people have ever heard Kim Jong-il's voice before well, no one this had. was the first time I had no one had. No one in the West had heard his voice, yeah. apart from one or two people in intelligence services. Um, so it was really a unique thing. And still to this day, I mean, he, he never spoke publicly mm -hmm. to his people, even in North Korea. So, yeah, these tapes are pretty special. So Shin, our filmmaker, and, and, it, and, and you guys did a great job of setting up the fact that he was really quite prolific. He, you know, as you mentioned earlier, uh, he made hundreds of hundreds films. Hundreds of films, yeah. And, uh, you had to watch many of them because you did a great job of interspersing his work with the narrative of this modern day story. I mean, how much time did you have to put into going into his films? <laughs> well, we watched All a lot. We watched a lot. <laughs> All the time. Well, it's, the only certain amount available. I mean, mm -hmm. it just, just getting a hold of these prints is difficult. And yeah, so well, we, only Kim Jong Il had them all, but we can <laughs> get our hands on them. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yes, it involved a lot of film watching. We had. We had Choi, who's the, mm -hmm. the actress. We had her in an interview, but mm -hmm. Shin passed away several years ago, so right. it wasn't available to us. So it was always a problem, how do we create our Shin character? Mm -hmm. And it seemed like the best way was through his movies. Not just to you know, uh, illustrate certain parts of the story for kind of in a playful way, but also to kind of get his mentality. Well, what, and, what and he you also did a great job of setting up his personality, too. You, you, you had access to his children. Yeah. Um, who are obviously now grown, but mm. uh, they mm. probably had very vivid memories of their their mum and dad being yeah. taken away in a very strange way. And uh, yeah. uh, but they, they were yeah. a very uh, interesting part of the narrative as well. Yeah, and of course, you know, at the time it was the biggest story in the news every day in South Korea. It was a, a huge deal. 
Well, let's take a look. I know that uh, we've got a clip, so let's take a look at the lovers and the despot. And that had to be tough. I mean, looking a little bit there at the lovers and the despot, you've got their son seeing mom and dad on vacation, <laughs> having a great time. At least that's the way the press showed it. Uh, just, it is absolutely amazing to me that this story happened. <laughs> it really is. And, I, and again, I, I'm being very careful not to give anything away. Mm -hmm. I want people to go see this. But that's an incredible setup. Uh, we are premiering tomorrow, are we not? Or tonight, uh, tonight actually, tonight. tonight at the Yarrow, tonight 9 o'clock, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. I, have you seen this film with a large audience yet? No, nope. it's going to be the first <laughs> screening to... You know, apart from a few people involved with making the film, no one else has seen you're gonna, it. Yet, you're so going to stick it out and watch the whole thing with yeah. the with the. I guess audience. we've seen yeah. it before, but yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it'd be interesting <laughs> to see what the reaction yeah. is. Right? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, of course, uh, with the premieres at Sundance, uh, Q and A's will follow. Um, yeah, I'm we'll very interested to see what this Q and A is going to be about. You'll probably get some interesting questions. Yeah, well, once people have seen it, we can talk a bit more about. You know, we're we don't sure. give too much yeah. away for now. <laughs> sure, sure. My, my my last question for you is: Have you had any reaction at all from North Korea on this? Has is is there been any kind of buzz at all? I mean, again, you're premiering <laughs> at the festival, so it may be too early to ask that question. We did approach them for various reasons and. And you know they refuse to have anything to do with it of because course. it's a taboo subject there now. So that reaction um, may be upcoming. Yeah. Yes. So let's just see what well, happens. We will, we, we've, you know, precedent being what it is, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll see what happens, right? <laughs> uh, Ross and uh, th Rob, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Uh, the film yeah, again is pleasure. The Lovers and the Despot. It's one of those films that is perfectly tailored for Sundance. I hope you get a chance to see that. Uh, it'll be playing throughout the uh, festival, and it will be playing in the Salt Lake City area as well. Make sure you check it out. We'll have more in the can after this. Thank you.